Okay then, let's have a look at the power chords to start off with. Now power chords are also known as fifths. And what a power chord is, is a chord that's, as it says, powerful. And all we're doing is playing the lowest three notes of that chord, of the major chord, um, but making sure that we use the root note as the lowest note. I'll explain. An E5 power chord, if we've got our E major shape there, an E5 power chord in its easiest um, format is this. Where we're playing the bottom three notes of the chord. So, we have an open E, we have a B, which is the second fret A string, and we have an E note, which is the second fret D string. And they're the only notes we play for a power chord. That's your full chord, this is the power chord. And what um, JJ Kale has done, or, in Eric Cla or Eric Clapton's version has done, is taken that E power chord and played it further up the neck. So the power chord we have and the three notes we're playing are E, B and E, okay? But this time the E note is on the um, A, A uh, string, seventh fret. And then we have the D string, which is the ninth note on the D string, uh, which is the B note, sorry. And then we have the E note again, which is the ninth fret G string. Ninth fret G string. So we have this playing it an octave above, like that. Now the whole of these power chords are just based around that same shape. So I'm not gonna go into loads and loads of detail because all you need to remember, as long as you've kept that shape there, the root note, E, is your E5 power chord or your E5 or just your E power chord. So the first part of the riff goes like this. And again. And all we're doing is playing E5, going down two frets, and playing our D5, or D power chord. And there's your root note, D. Okay, so two down strokes using the A, D, and G string on your E5 chord. Then we're gonna go and hit the D once. And then we're gonna get back up to the E again, E power chord. So we have this. Okay. When you've hit that E5 chord, when you've gone back up from the D5, relieve all the pressure off your hand on the left hand so it doesn't ring out. Or alternatively, use your right hand to stop the strings or the notes ringing out. So we have this. Then we're going to go back down to the D5 again. All right, and again. Now, as you can see, the brilliance of this riff is, one, it's simplicity, but secondly, the timing. When we play that second D5 chord, there's a slight gap. And if you play it with the backing track, you'll see what I mean, and I'll try and give you some idea of how to count it in. So what we're doing is, I'm going to count to four on that. One, two, three, four, and five. And I let that D5 ring out. So it sounds like this. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then when you've said five, you just go, two, three, four, and we go back to the main riff again. So it sounds like this. One, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, etc. So therefore, you're getting the accuracy of that particular riff, because that's what makes it distinctive. If we didn't do that, it would sound like this. Useless, it's just, a dirge, but that little gap and the fact that you're not letting the strings run out some, in some instances and letting them ring out in others makes the riff. Now, when we do the uh, next bit, which goes down the scale, we are playing an E5, down two frets D5, down two frets C5, and finally the B5 there. And just so you're not lost, 2nd fret A string, 4th fret D string, 4th fret G string. And when we hit 
that B5, we go like that. We do not let it ring out, and you either use your left hand to relieve the pressure, or you go your right hand like this to stop it ringing out. So this bit goes. Like that. So, do it one more time, that last bit, nice and slowly. E5, D5, all ringing out. C5, B5, and then back to the main riff again. So if we put it all together, this is hopefully what we've got. etc etc so i hope you've really enjoyed that it's such a great riff to play and it's brilliant you can impress your friends and it's not as simple as it first looks we need to try and make sure that that little bit of timing that little gap there is perfect so you actually make sure that when you're playing that final d5 chord it comes out very clean very clear and there's that distinctive gap between the e5 and the D5. So that's really cool. That's something very basic for you to learn, which will help your power chords and obviously another riff. What I'm going to do uh, in my next lesson is we're going to play this riff again and I'm going to show you three or four little licks that you can play and make your own up that you can play between each riff. So watch out for that one in my next coaching session and I'll see you all pretty soon. Ciao for now!